remember, but in 2014, the Traffic Transportation Task Force, and we meet once a month and we talk about these kind of things regularly. <laughs> so what we did is we convened a special meeting and we talked specifically about the sidewalks that are in the um, town's capital improvement plan, as well as recommendations that came out of the 2014 bicycle and pedestrian um, plan that was done by MITC, and some of the recommendations that came out of a 2005 Western Sampson study for um, bike routes through town. So I'm kind of losing my voice, sorry. <laughs> but um, so, and then we came, we used um, and the engineering division's existing sort of weighting system and matrix for how they figure out whether when pro whether projects are you know short term, mid term, or long term, and we added in some different criteria that we thought would be um, things that the complete streets program would look for, um, and we weighted things slightly differently. Um, so I'll put the matrix up on the screen. that's visible for everybody, but um, com the, com we, the Complete Streets program, they look for, um, you know, adding additional modes of transportation to streets. So um, from that perspective, we prioritize like new construction of sidewalks. We, gave, we weighted a little higher than infill um, or maintenance. And then um, as you can see in the dark blue, we gave priori the most priority to improvements that would be done on school routes, um, and then safety and mobility improvements, parks and playgrounds, downtown commuter rail area improvements, um, things that are already on the sidewalk plow route, so additional sidewalks in those locations. Um, and then further over in this blue section, we had um, a couple other criteria that we added, which are if there's already a sidewalk on that stretch of road, there we we um, adding a sidewalk to the other side wouldn't necessarily be adding a mode to that street. Um, so we did we took a deduction, um, and then we added points if the improvement, either the bike lane or shadow or the sidewalk, was going to add a mode to that street. So that's how we weighted it. Um, from like a location and you know complete streets um, standpoint, and then engineering helped us with this feasibility factor, which looked at you know um, broader things happening on the street. So, would you have to remove trees, street trees, to put in a sidewalk, or is the street too narrow to accommodate a sidewalk? Um, would it be? I guess when did you factor in cost? Is that sort of towards the end? Yeah. Cost really never really factored in. No, <coughs> not at this point. Not at okay. this point yet. When we're just breaking down the priorities, that they're based primarily only on um, the factors in the blue and the feasibility factor, and that gave the priority ranking. Um, when projects start to come up on the list, then estimated cost will start to play in as if we can fit something in, depending on funding. So basically, this list that you have in front of you is a compilation of all of the. Um, sort of sidewalk improvements that we were planning, the town as a whole was planning on making or looking at over the next five or so years, um, probably longer actually, as well as you know some recommendations from the bicycle and pedestrian plan that was just done a few years ago. Um, we went through all the recommendations in that plan and sort of figured out which ones have we already done, which ones should we be doing, which ones are longer term, and we incorporated the ones we thought were feasible for the Complete Streets program into this. Um, so. One of the um, things that the state looks for when they're um, reviewing, you know, figuring out whether we're all eligible for funding is they want us to show that we've done some stakeholder outreach, we've solicited feedback, um, and that we have like a, a logical waiting system for these projects. So that's, you know, why we're here talking about this. Um, and I know not a lot of notice was given, but we're under kind of a tight 
schedule and we have so much going on in my office, but it's great to see all you guys here. Um, and we welcome your feedback. That feasibility factor taken into account what's below the road, utilities, uh, cost of So the feasi feasibility factor is probably the only subjective group that's in there. Um, and yes, it does. It, it, it takes into account um, do we have any ledge outcroppings? Or is this going to require uh, a more in-depth project than just putting a sidewalk down? That would actually be very feasible. You know, we're just going to go in there, strip some material out, put the sidewalk in. That's highly feasible. If we have to get in there, um, we don't have enough room in our layout. We have to do some taking. Do we have to um, move some utility poles, which can be very costly, things of that nature, things that are going to be difficult to get the project going as opposed to easier more feasible uh, so that it weighs in it doesn't you know unless you're you're hitting it with a 50% um, reduction with a factor that would be something that's highly uh, not feasible which uh, further down on the list you'll see I, I believe Haverhill Street that requires the moving of uh, possibly 20 plus utility poles um, and maybe some land taking so it, it it becomes a longer term project and something that's not feasible in the short term. And you think there's enough in that quarter point difference um, to um, to really show that impact? Uh, I, like you said, you could, you could find a strip that only needs a sidewalk, but if there's all kinds of utilities under there or tree trees or land takings, it seems to be much more involved. Than <coughs> so I'm you know, typically underground utilities, we're not really going to get involved in much of those when we do the sidewalk project. We don't go down deep enough. Um, we, that's not to say that we won't run into shallow ones. Um, the utilities that we do run into pro issues with are utility poles. Okay. Um, we run into problems with uh, public shade trees. Um, and. You know, some public shade trees can be taken down, some cannot. Um, layout with the roadways and other issues, ledge, those are other issues that we run into. I, we, we've been back and forth with that feasibility factor, and um, it doesn't take much to really bump up a street down on the list when we start weighting it correctly with that factor. Um, so, you know, to put a, a long range in there, you know, we even played around with maybe putting a scale of 1 to 10 on there and weighing it properly. And it just, you know, it became too subjective as opposed to having just a couple groups. Okay. That's all I have. Um, the, <clears throat> I'm interested in the thought process of the um, maintenance versus infill versus new construction. Um, I guess I'll put it out there that my thought would be, um, well, if you listen to the state or anyone at Beacon Hill, it's exactly the opposite. That's one thought. Um, but I guess my, my thought would be that it would be the infill pieces that you would have the best, I'm going to say, return on investment because you're actually you're you're completing a network so you're leveraging all the sidewalk work that was done before for just that you know just connecting that little piece as opposed to these ones that you know aside from the sharrows and stuff and i would think would end up being bigger bigger so, so as Julie more costly pieces we, we have met several times um small group um, between julie and myself on an engineering office and we convene in a special ptdf group mm -hmm. And that flipped itself around a few times um, as far as what we thought would, should be the priority and how that should go. Uh, the decision was that when you're looking at um, complete streets and how the state loosely defines it, um, it's additional modes to open it up into intermodal, um, you know, uh, to, for, for intermodal use and and to get uh, pedestrians to interact with green rail to interact with the school to get everyone um, uh, functioning together. Well, when we started flipping these around, we looked at maintenance. Maintenance really wasn't doing that. Um, yes, it was repairing some safety mobility issues, 
Um, but it was not, um, wasn't falling into what the definition of complete streets was. Infill, when we started switching that around, we weren't really seeing infill coming up to the top as much as you would think. So um, new construction, and you can see some twos make it in to the top ranking, mm -hmm. um, which is infill. And we're pretty comfortable with actually how this, this has come in. You, you actually see a maintenance has popped up on, on the top there, too. Um, with that weight of a one, two, or a three, you, know, you get a little bit of variation in there, but you don't get uh, a major, major change. change. But that was a good question. Based on the little information that we have, the guidance that we've been given. So. And so that one, two, and three is, um, is that multiplied by the location criteria or added? Sorry, added? it's added. So at the bottom, bottom the bottom line there. Um, the very bottom line where it says priority ranking. That's that's how the math is. So basically, the priority ranking, we, we sum the construction method with the location criteria and then multiply that by any opposing sidewalk deduction, additional mode accommodation factors, and then finally the feasibility factor. And the green one's the construction method? Yes. Correct. So, yes. I that's what I so see that. You would, su you would sum up green and blue would be summed up and then... Um, well, portions of the blue would be a multiplication yeah, as well. We should change the two. The last two blues should be a different color. Okay. We could do that. Yeah. It's just slightly lighter. Right. You can even change it to red. Yeah. So the the fact. Mm -hmm. So I think John made a really good point. If there is a project that's a two that really connects some some network that really completes something, then that's an important piece, and maybe that has some other subjective weighted priority. I'm not sure if there's a if there's a way to jump over this. I guess if they're all in this order, right? So that's where the additional that's where the additional mode accommodation would actually come in. And and that was a that was late to the ball game that, that category, but we were finding that we were missing that element. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and we were finding that you were getting all these um, you know, new constructions up there without popping in some of the other smaller ones. And it was the additional mode accommodation that was really driving the force there. That, that's really, um, you're multiplying by, you know, 1.5. So you're not getting a deduction, you're adding 50%. So it really does boost up that up. number. And that's the whole point of complete streets. If it's nothing's right. there, you, you, you really need to have something there. And that's, um, so we added that category in, and it seemed to sh it shuffled actually a lot of things around when we did that, um, and reprioritized. Not all of them pop up, as you can see. We mm -hmm. have some that don't pop up, but majority of those do pop up on on the top of the list. Well, I think they did a wonderful job of, of identifying the things. The, uh, I mean, you and I both live on the South Street side of the, the town, which is one of the real challenges in terms of feasibility because of the narrowness of the, uh, the right-of-way. And as, they, as noted here, there's basically there's few sidewalks. Uh, you basically can't walk from Main Street to, uh, to Old Walnut Street. You know, except in the middle of the road. And it's something that we, local bias, we would love to have sidewalk there. But I also know that it's it's hard to do it. I don't want a sidewalk there. Well, that's because you're, you're on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd lose some of your driveway. <laughs> I reviewed the, uh, the sites, the pictures on the, uh, on the network, and everything looked very much at work. I mean, they did a very good job identifying opportunities and, and taking a look at the uh, priorities. But I, 
I, this is all things, these are all projects that were identified in some previous effort. So, right? right. So not necessarily things that have bubbled up since those times or that you, that came up through a conversation. Right. We have a few, we have a few on there that, that have uh, come up through time. Um, we actually got a few that came in yeah. um, as part of the comment process. Um, I think we had three of those. Um, yeah. We have. Um, Which we'll be looking at to, to see how they fit into this prioritization, um, or if they fall into the definition of what complete street is, and then then we would plug it into this prioritization <laughs> at that point. And two of them are already sort of. We got three comments. Um, one of them is about South and Walnut, which is already on this list, um, so we'll definitely give that some more consideration. Um, it's tricky, though, with the um, scenic roads and the tightness and then the turns, and there's really not a lot of sidewalks, as you know, in that area, so it's almost like sidewalk to nowhere. Um, not that that's a bad thing always, but um, that just deems some more um, consideration. And then we got some comments from Virginia Blodgett regarding um, Washington Street. Um, and I'm not, I don't want to assume I know what, she, what she's going to say, but I, we have been emailing about it. So I didn't know if, you know, once we get to that point. Sure. Um, we'll talk. And then we have a comment regarding Longfellow Road, um, which we were looking at earlier today and actually makes a lot of sense. So maybe it should be incorporated into this once we look into it further and um, uh, see how it fits into the matrix. So um, my other question is, in doing these location criteria, I see you have school route, which indicates some level of usage, um, um, <coughs> and maybe parks and playgrounds could indicate usage, may may not, depend on the street and the location and everything. Uh, and optimally, right, we do this with data on, on. I mean, there's two ways to look at this, right? There's how much a, a facility gets used or uh, that isn't complete, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but that's not completely fair because maybe it would get used if it was complete, right? Mm -hmm. um, so sort of an, an induced de demand concept. But I guess in... Uh, um, my question is, when you were doing these, was there any, was there any sort of a sense or attempt, or was there anything in the, um, in the um, school that study that was done on um, um, safe routes to schools on actually volumes of uh, <coughs> usage on any of these? So we looked at the bicycle and pedestrian looked at all of our sidewalks in school areas and given a bunch of recommendations with the town to do. And most of them have been taken care of. And then there's the remaining ones that are on this list. As far as usage, I don't know if the Safe Routes to School program data was factored uh, into this at some point. No, a lot of a lot of those changes have been made. Yeah. Um, okay. There are some that are lingering have not been done but majority of those have been made a lot of a lot of them were um, um, changing over some of our crosswalks to a different style um, which are actually some of the projects that are in here too so mm -hmm. not they're not all and when we call something a new construction um, handicap ramps might fall in as a new construction mm -hmm. um, so it's important to keep in mind that it's not all sidewalks um, if we were to develop just a sidewalk plan <coughs> it would be a little different this is Right. more of like a complete streets we're looking at. Um, but to answer your question, you know, safe routes to schools, complete streets, that's, they're all gearing towards um, that use. Um, so that, that's why school routes ended up becoming the first right. on that priority list. And then obviously safety and mobility, um, that ranks up on, on second and um, parks and playgrounds. And we felt as though that commuter rail in downtown had a lot of intermodal already, um, so we sort of weighted it in the middle, and we wanted to get more to the parks and schools, um, get everything more walkable. So that's that's sort of how they weigh in there. 
it, the reason why I ask that is I look at the very bottom of the list, um, and that High Street, Middlesex, Divine section probably has um, a, a lot more pedestrian use and is sort of a, a weird area. Right? I, I don't know what else to call it. Like it, uh, an awkward area there mm -hmm. has a lot of a lot of usage, but it it falls to the bottom of the list. Right. Um, uh, probably a lot more usage than you know a lot of other a lot of other um, sections <coughs> um, on the list. And I'm not saying that it should be higher. Um, just sort of trying to figure out how how the prioritization so ended up. So it's happening. also important to know that. We, we all know that prioritization lists don't always come out the way you want them right, to come out right. to. So um, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a prioritization. So it gives us a baseline of where should we go based on the facts. And obviously, do some projects have to be cherry picked out because they make more sense? Yes. I mean, we could we could try to do the math on this and get it down pretty tight, but to spend that a much amount of uh, man hours on trying to figure out what that mathematical formula would be, um, it would probably come down to, you know, it makes more sense that this, come, that this comes to the forefront. Um, we haven't gone through and done that yet. And that's where the estimated cost would probably come in at that point um, and see where we fall in with, with the state. Um, Julie, I think as we're going to present the plan, it was just going to be here on our list and it goes out as far as five years. Um, Say that again. It's like with the state, were we just going to produce the list of the state um, without giving what was going to happen in what year? Um, um, I mean, I think we would, <coughs> once we figure out the prioritization, we would sort of just put this right into their template. Right. Um, and then we're supposed to put a range, a t like of how you know long we think and like try to put them in order so that it extends out five years. Um, it, that doesn't mean they're going to fund us for five years by any means. Um, I mean, the funding isn't going to go very far. <laughs> but <laughs> if for some reason they want five years, and we thought, why, does, why not just throw the kitchen sink at it? Right. <coughs> so I believe Vine and High Street. That, yeah, that's uh, Vine and High Street. There, it's a small, it's, it's um, not a major project at all, actually, to connect that up. It, it is awkward, though. Yeah. Um, you, have both, you have, if anyone's not familiar with High Street, um, I mean, you have sidewalks on both sides, and then you get down to the point where Vine Street comes in at a very acute angle. Um, and we do have a handicap ramp or a sidewalk currently right there now. We would have to take a parking space from the MBTA um, to make a, a handicap ramp, sort of why it fell where it fell. Yeah. Um, so we, I can't remember when we did that sidewalk. It was a few years back um, on the Vine Street. The connection would be across Vine Street down at the point, and we would we would be taking a couple, couple handy, uh, a couple spots to put a, a handicap ramp in there. Oh, like right here. Yep. Right yeah. straight across. And then um, it would connect over to the And then it would connect up to that sidewalk and you down to the depot. But then the one that um, John was talking about is actually from Middlesex to Vine. So, so it's, it actually goes. Well, that that is. Right. Well, that section of High Street. Right? So it's all yeah. the, it's this whole high this whole section mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but that but right I mean that's what it lists here but the the problem is ju really just down at the at the end there. Yeah. Right. Right. That's how these are listed. It's it's this segment. Right. Right. Not necessarily the the Correct. whole segment. Correct. Correct. The this segment where there's. And we have actually, <coughs> um, the fourth one down, on the list is Vine Street and High Street adding crosswalks and handicap ramps. So, I was actually thinking about this over the weekend that it might be a good idea to combine things like, like potentially we should put the, High Street sidewalk up, you know, with the Vine Street and High Street crosswalks and handicap ramps is all, you know, one continuous area. Um, and then in addition to that, I note that the High Street um, sidewalk project has a feasibility factor of one. 
Um, so that's another reason it could probably be bumped further up. No, they're not. Um, Four hundred thousand dollars is the amount they have allocated to each town, or the amount that they have in reserve, I guess, for each town. Mm -hmm. um, not in, yeah. I mean, it's like a, I, my understanding is that it's a one-time thing. It's a one-time yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. So if we get that four hundred thousand, let's say we get some max Can we choose to spend that any way we want on these projects? So instead of doing the one for four hundred thousand, could we do you know ten of them at forty? That's a good question. I think it's a combination of staff and them figuring out how to use it. Okay. Um, so they look at our list and do some examining and figure out what they think is most appealing. Hmm. With our input, I, I think. Does that sound right? When can we make decisions about our town? We chase so many state initiatives. Oh. I guess the last thing I'd say is that if, if we did get funded for some of these projects, that would free up some of our own project money to do other ones that we felt were important but didn't meet the definition of complete streets. Um, in a sense, yes. I know that that money's not... Well, <laughs> there is no well money. I, I only say that because if, if there was a... If we say we had 400000 and there was a project on here, we were able to do several projects and get halfway into another project and that money may supplement um, that project. But you are correct. I mean, 400000 coming in should, on the other, other end, allow us to do some of these other projects with our own money. Um, so you are correct. Uh, it, you know, I, I think right now 75000 is what the town. It's not much when you're talking sidewalk improvements. Um, so that's what we have available in the town funding side. So 400,000, and that's sort of why you'll see, um, in talk to, to Julie's point about maybe combining some things, and Chris and I had this discussion, when you start combining some things, now you start getting into a bigger project, and maybe this handicap ramp at Vine Street would make a lot of sense if we just got that little piece in there, at least it'd make that whole area a little bit more interconnected. And then we could come back and do High Street and, and get it. You know, instead of having them come down Middlesex down to Vine to make that route, maybe we could get them to come down High Street. So that's sort of the thought behind it. Um, certainly different philosophies on how you want to go about it, but um, that was the point in maybe kind of keeping things separate. But it does make sense um, when you're talking, putting on a project to put everything together. So it, it's a balancing act. Okay. Why don't we take some public comment? Um, you guys know the rules. <laughs> Please state your name and address for the record. Virginia Blodge at 99 Prescott Street, um, involved with walkable Reading, and we have actually several members of the committee here tonight. Um, and uh, we've obviously over the years tried to kind of keep abreast of what's happening with sidewalks and crosswalks and, and all that and put in uh, some input. Um, there are several comments that I think came up. We just met downstairs a few minutes ago and uh, we were talking about some of our um, things that we're happy with and some disappointments. So I guess I'll get the disappointments out of the way first. Uh, one of them might be the, um, the fact that one of the, the first thing in the bicycle and pedestrian report from 2014 is a huge discussion of the fact that when that West Street should have bike lanes and it explained how we could have bike lanes on both sides and of course now West Street is done and there are not bike lanes on both sides but <laughs> um, again I know the state funded a lot of the funding for that so we're really not sure how that fell through the cracks and why it wasn't pushed um, harder that we would uh, be able to have bike lanes there. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of us have commented over time is the intersection, the new intersection again was part of the West Street project at the corner of Summer and uh, Woburn Street on the um, southwest, southeast corner uh, where the new house was just rehabbed and so on, Mary Good's house there. That 
tra all four traffic lights were put in, and the one at that corner is pretty much smack dab in the middle of the sidewalk. I mean, I, I just, I guess there's three feet around it. I guess you can get by it. I don't know how the sidewalk plows are doing it, but it's one of those things that, again, uh, we, at the time when it was happening, we contacted town a couple of times and tried to say, why is, you know, look like that's where it was going to be, and we kept saying, why is it happening, and what's being done about it, and everybody just kind of said, it's the way it is, but um, so get that out of the way first. I still don't know if maybe there's anything that can be done, <coughs> either uh, anything additional on west or at that light. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, we, um, there were a couple of spots that weren't really discussed that we, um, one was in the bicycle report, I believe, and that's the intersection um, where you go up into Staples, so Walker's Brook and New Crossing. That, that's one of those kind of funky intersections where there are crosswalks on three sides but not the fourth. And when you actually cross the three ways, you, if you're crossing from like stop and shop and you go across, if you want to get to Staples, technically you have to cross um, New Crossing. Then you have to cross Walker's Brook, which puts you to a side where there's no sidewalk. And then you have to come back the third leg to get to the sidewalk that goes up into um, walk up into the stores. So again, we've never understood why there wasn't a fourth crosswalk. And I guess a lot of our questions, uh, again, looking at the money on this list and estimates and so on, we obviously know that putting in a new sidewalk is a lot more expensive than striping a road. And so that if, you know, if hopefully those are some of the things that could be prioritized that, you know, it seems like if you've got the equipment here and you're doing crosswalks that there are some places that could be done for less money <laughs> that, you know, might be uh, a big help. And that's one of those places that, you know, we'd like to possibly see done. Um, the other two big areas that, again, weren't really um, brought up in this but were in the bicycle report, bicycle pedestrian report, are the intersection of Washington and High. So when you cross the cross, cross the railroad tracks, there are no crosswalks going either across High Street or across Washington. So kind of on the corner by the Green Street Apartments, but you know, <coughs> down a little further. And it's a big, wide intersection. There's a, it kind of, you know, it's a long stretch when you go from across High Street um, and again, so we'd like that looked at for possible uh, crosswalks. And the last one is the one where you really take your life in your hands, which is down by um, McDonald's, that Ash Street, Bolton, Main Street crossing, which is really, really long. Uh, I know at one point way back when, we were told that when the MBTA redid that crossing, it was all going to be fixed. Well, nothing really happened to the crossing. It's just a long, long stretch. So if this may be some way that, again, that intersection could be looked at. Um, those are a couple of the main things. I'm sure there are some things that other folks might want to, um, to add in. I think Everett will address maybe the <laughs> Washington Street thing. <laughs> OK. I, and should we respond to that? I can briefly comment on most of those, because we, we did look at uh, a yeah. majority of those. Um, we'll start with this one in particular. This. Without getting into too much detail about this area here, I can tell you that um, this was all part of a Reading safety audit from the Mass DOT, um, Julian Engineering, uh, DPW staff were involved along with the police department and fire department. Um, this specifically did not make it on the list because this here is a multi-million dollar project um, to fix the actual <laughs> issues of what's going on there. Um, it's not as simple as, there, there's no simple, easy way to fix this issue without um, doing some taking, land takings, changing roadways completely, um, and redesigning configurations, geometry of roadways. Um, that includes um, working with uh, 28, so in MBTA. So it's, it didn't make it on this list for that reason. Um, we have a preliminary draft of the road safety audit that we can share. Uh, yeah, pre we have not received the final. There was an extensive study done of this intersection um, 
they're putting together a report. They actually contacted me today mm -hmm. about it. Okay. So I'm happy to share that with you if you want to see like what's being discussed. Okay. And I guess maybe the other thing is the South Pole, South Main Street thing, which was we did a lot of work was done on it when you worked on the um, road diet, the road and diet, and all guidelines. those discussions and guidelines. And then again, I don't best know. Practices. That's best still practices underway. And, the okay. road diet study. That's what they called me about today, actually. Okay. Um, Do you want to talk about the high street? Yep. Washington we can go to the street. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. High of Washington was looked at, and also the police weighed in on, on this as well. Um, right off the bat, it you would think that'd be a perfect spot for a crosswalk. Um, and in reality, it's a long crossing. They're actually very, they're frowned upon as far as making a long crossing across a, a throated intersection like that. You'd actually um, have to put a resting island in there in some sort. <coughs> that being said, you know, the, and the police also weighed in on this as well, and people who live in this area will know what I'm talking about. People don't generally look in both directions when they make that turn to come around the corner, and, it, and it's a safety issue as far as putting a crossing there. The other issue is that you cannot cross, put a crosswalk into a driveway entrance. I believe there's a driveway entrance that comes further down to the intersection there. Um, when we looked at which, that. What, which way? That high in Washington. High Street. Right, right. here. Yeah. We also looked at maybe putting in, in, in um, yeah, we looked a mid-block at... crosswalks, were, which were also frowned upon for safety reasons. People don't. Mid-block. Mid-block. Mid-block mid 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 crosswalks. They're, they're dangerous in the sense that people don't, they generally don't look for crosswalks. When you're stop. not at an intersection, they don't stop. For right, correct. Right. And also, um, and also, I believe there was issues we were talking about too with the proximity to the uh, the railroad crossing. Correct. To one of the um, gates. We we spent a decent amount of time looking at this stretch and seeing where it would be feasible to put a crosswalk. And with all the curb cuts along this stretch, and then we'd have to lose a parking space going across. Poss possibly is, a few. It's just it's tricky. It's just not that it can't be done and shouldn't be explored further. It's just, it's complicated. Yeah. Well, um, you cannot have a crosswalk going into a driveway. That, it's against regulations. You have to have, it has to have its own separate handicap ramp. And that's the same thing when you add a crosswalk, you have to have handicap ramps. Um, so that's a new regulation. So to add a crosswalk just isn't to add a crosswalk, it's to add a crosswalk plus two handicap ramps. Um, and when you add one handicap ramp on one side of the street, you have to add it on the other side of the street. So those are the regulations that we deal with. Um, it, so we looked at it, the very good points that you brought up because we looked at a lot of those areas. And we didn't just dismiss them without a lot of conversation amongst our PTTF. Um, we can certainly go back and look at them again to see if there's any way that we can get something in there. Um, but this one in particular we looked at extensively. We looked at the one at Ash Street extensively. And was there another? Uh, new Crossing in Walkersburg. Crossing. But I wonder, does Gina have something to say about this one? <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Gina Snyder. I live at 11 Jadem Terrace, just a few blocks north of this intersection. Mm -hmm. You're talking about multimodal. There's a lot of bicyclists who are coming. I mean, we've Walkable Reading has gotten comments about not having enough bike racks at the train station. This is a dangerous intersection. I would like to see it put back on the list, even if it's tricky. This one, something needs to be done to help both pedestrians and bicyclists navigate the area to get to the train station. I think that at some point, somebody is going to get hurt here. Everett Logic, Walkable Reading. Um, to piggyback on that, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeal is just allowed a uh, 40B to go on on Prescott and Lincoln Street, which is 70 plus units, 67 units or something like that, that's housing on the fact that it's walkable. Well, where's the nearest food? There's no food downtown, basically, unless you go to a restaurant. They're going to be walking through this intersection and the Ash Street intersection for the shortest distance to get the market basket. It, you're talking about cooperation in the town and piggybacking on problem on top of the problem these things really have to be looked at and put on the list because the number of bikes that now are appearing, even this winter, basically one of the bike tracks, even on the snowy days that we had a few weeks ago, 
were full. People are biking in under different circumstances now and coming around these corners and uh, we walk it on the, um, on the south side, which is continuous street. So even if there could be a crosswalk put in at another position someplace down on Washington Street, um, it's just, it's just going to become more of a problem when you increase the, the advertisement for the uh, 40B is they're not going to want cars. And they're going to have to walk. Either that or they're going to have to go five or six train stops to go get their groceries uh, in Somerville or someplace. So. Uber. Uber. <laughs> Can I go to Uber? Uber. 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 <coughs> yeah, I think that's, maybe we take a look at this and maybe it's not an immediate change, but maybe it's time with this, the 40B development, the completion of that. Because once it gets occupied, this whole area is going to be messy with traffic, especially, you know, when those trains come in. Well, there, really mess, you know? there is a, not right, I mean, there's a state responsibility here where they were the ones that, um, that sort of um, foisted the, the density in that location because it's, you know, because it's train. downtown and walkable and near the train Trains station. Um, and yet, and so they ought to have some, at least some responsibility in providing you know the, the the that functionality, and I'm thinking more about that. You know, I I, I agree with the you know the Ash Main Street um, quiet zone crossing everything right there. I mean that that's a that's like a four three million dollar project right there. Probably um, more. Than that, probably yeah. more. Um, so um, you, you know that's not something the town's gonna gonna. Do but you know any leverage we can any way we can try and try and uh, uh, get more money to, to do something like that where mm -hmm. where it, it's going to be an issue. Just one more quick comment that the downtown two of the walks by the depot have that never going to continental or whatever they call the other type of striping not mm -hmm. traditional just two lines and I think that the more in the downtown that we can strike differently so that at least they're more visible to the driver mm -hmm. because we have an awful lot of the ones in that whole depot downtown area which are just the two stripes <clears throat> and you can see even in this picture how much more visible the other type is so whether it's at the Wuben crossings uh, which I know some of them are on your list um, or anything down on the other end by the, the, the uh, mm -hmm. high street or whatever that Anything in the downtown that gets striped should be striped that way so that they're more visible. I think that's a real priority. So um, I guess I do want to ask you a question. Um, uh, it's sort of odd to me, right, this isn't a safety program, right? This is not a, sa a set of safety priorities, but uh, almost all of this is really driven by safety. Right, uh, I, and so it's hard to yeah, not like have when you were yeah, in terms of what the state's looking at, how do they do they? Is there any sort of differentiation between a safety project and a and a project which is what this is is trying to get more you know sort of more um, multimodal yeah more multimodal. Do they differentiate anything there? The answer may well, be no, because <laughs> it's hard to separate. It, it's it's vague, um, to say the least. Their push is for multimodal. Yeah. That's that's one hundred percent certain. Um, that being said, they're not they're not ignoring safety and mobility issues. So that that's why that's also on the list too. So. One part of multimodal is, you know, being, being accessible. Safe. Accessible, you know, right. so it's they're very intertwined. Yeah, and it's tough to pull one out <coughs> of that. So, but they haven't. I guess it's good news. They haven't come out and said, no, you shouldn't be looking at safety projects. Only safety projects, because I know they have, com they have different funding when it's just a safety project. Right. They have. They they have when they're looking at high hazard, high hazard intersections, which we have a couple in town. Um, you know, we, we are looking at a few of those. One of them in particular is um, the Bolton and Ash and that whole area up in there. So there is a road safety, there is a 
safety audit that that's going on in that whole area right now. So we are looking at that separately um, to hopefully come up with some sort of um, solution to that issue out there. And again, there's separate money that we can get from the state if they deem it a high hazard intersection. Is there any um, acceptance, I guess is a way to put it, of, uh, of going high, like an overpass, pedestrian overpass, multimodal uh, kind of thing? No. The ramp alone would kill you. <laughs> Where would we put it? We'd have to take all the yeah. parking. A lot of that yeah, no, I mean, it's, it depends yeah. on if you did a um, an overpass, if you will, not not from High Street, but from the Lincoln Street side, or whatever that uh, the other uh, the one by the station. I mean, if you just go diagonally from there over towards uh, one general way. I mean, it's it, because we we both basically it's an intersection that you can't solve on a single level. So That's just from here all the way over to here. I'm just kidding. What is it you're suggesting? Well, I'm just, I mean, asking if there has been any out-of-the-box thinking on um, some of the things that, um, I mean, I have a separate, completely separate issue down on the other part of town. But <coughs> this particular intersection is, has been driving me crazy for 30 years, so. Which one? The, uh, this one? Bolton Ash. Uh, yeah, Main Street, <coughs> Main Street uh, Crossing and, and so forth. Whatever we do here really should be with an eye to anything we might think about that's happening in our new little development zone yeah. that you get the workshop's going to start on, right? Because yeah. this whole corner here could potentially be a major yeah, it, entrance, it, it, you know, hardly to this. Oh, behind you. Okay. Ever obliged you. 99 Preston Street. Um, I mean, change direction on one of the uh, things down on Washington Street uh, where the Parker Tavern is. There's mm -hmm. a section there that is not sidewalk on the uh, south side. Um, there's a reason for that. Your most historic building in town and deserves to have its setting enhanced as much as possible. So I polled, uh, I sent out an email to the president and header, uh, polled the board or asked the board if they had any input on it. and. Um, Three out of four definitely would not prefer to have new sidewalk put in front of the Parker Tavern where the stone wall is. Now, there's probably several good reasons more than just historically. First of all, uh, sidewalks on the south side uh, remain icy and especially concrete for a longer period of time than on the north side. So if you were to do the inside block where the new uh, 40B is going to be, and put sidewalk on that side, you get more of the walkability within the block, on the block that you're talking about, um, <coughs> dealing with, and uh, you take it away from the parking tavern side. Uh, it also it gives uh, some people a chance to look at the parking down there, um, and um, the many times that you probably can't get a fire truck through there without pushing all the cars out of the way. Um, so it would be a chance um, to look at that section by not saying we're going to do the 89 to 105, which is basically the Parker Tavern block, and um, leave it as too country sidewalk as it really has been for 300 years. Um, okay, question about that. Did you have something? So I, that wasn't my only comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really would like to see some of these other projects at least mentioned on this list. It was kind of hard to interpret it with the study that was associated with the documentation and the other studies that weren't there, such as the South Main Street study that talked about doing the road diet. Some acknowledgement that those projects are still on the list would be helpful to the public because I was looking at it saying, where is this? This was a big thing the MAPC studied. It was recommended and it's not here. There's crosswalk there. Uh, to get across Main Street, you are taking your life into your hands. In fact, somebody was killed, is my understanding. So, you know, just the fact that there's a need for a crosswalk and perhaps a signal for walkers to be able to get across Main Street down there um, at the end of Minot. 
um, you know, acknowledging that these projects are, are somewhere else if they're not on this priority list because they really will help people walk to places. I mean, man, you read about in the police log at Vega World, if people would just walk there, you wouldn't have this. Every single weekend, the police are there telling people to move on, get them to walk there by putting that crosswalk in. It would be great to see it. Um, and then, um, you know, maybe, I guess it's not part of this plan now that I'm at this meeting. I realize that this is a pretty limited look at things, but if you could find ways to get pedestrians away from the Bolton <coughs> Street and uh, the Main Street end of Bolton Street, and maybe take use of the, um, the easement that goes through, put a little bridge over the stream and get them into general way through the neighborhoods rather than crossing Main Street, you know, be a little more creative about how you get people, when they're in these other modes, a bike or a pedestrian, get them away from the traffic as much as you can by finding little paths that they can take and so they're not even in danger of getting hit by a car. Um, that was something I brought up and tried to get Dana's properties interested in and they, you know, they don't want to spend any money so they, they weren't going to work on that. But you know, ideas like that would be really nice to see. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> Virginia. Uh, Virginia Adams, a member of Walkable Reading, 59 Azalea Circle. If I may take a quick look at the map. Um, as a historian, I can't pass up the opportunity. <laughs> but Ash Street is one of the earliest roads that went up to the center of town. And long before 28 was put in, long before any of these, uh, before the railroad either, even. So always think about Ash Street as being the road from Wakefield, the first parish, coming up to the new town of Reading. So even though some of it up in the center um, is kind of cut off now, it, it really is an ancient way for your information. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid looking at it though that the way the state <laughs> rules work, it'll probably only get more disconnected in order to make this, these intersections work. So we'll have to figure out a different way to um, memorialize it somehow. Just one more quick comment. Sure. Um, the other thing is that we were, we always have a concern with walkability and so on that we live in New England and there are lizards <laughs> every day. Uh, and the sidewalk Plowing, I know, is an issue because it's expensive. Um, at one point, a couple of years ago, uh, we were given by DPW Engineering a copy of the sidewalk plowing map. Uh, I think Walkable Reading would appreciate that if that's possible. Um, because it's the same old story, when, you know, the more sidewalks we add, it's great, but then if you can't get down any of them for, you know, six months of the year, it, it's almost, you know, a shame that, you know, that they're there. Um, like Washington, I noticed that Washington Park area, that sidewalk is not plowed in the winter apparently. And you know, so it was awful this winter. And you know, you, the people still were using the park. A lot of people with dogs go to that park. Um, the bat, new basketball course, new playground and so on. But the sidewalks, and again, don't want the wall down, but because they're behind the wall, they get no sun, it gets no sun whatsoever. So, you know, if there's some sort of coordination that could happen when we talk about new sidewalks and where to put them, that then we can maybe include some of them on the sidewalk plowing routes as well. Okay. okay. <clears throat> One last uh, thing, looking, looking at the list again, list of possibilities. The one that doesn't seem to be here, and it's a little bit surprising, would be Walnut Street from uh, Sturgis Park <coughs> towards Main Street. Is a, a fairly long stretch of I think of Walnut, with no sidewalk either side, and but it would seem to be a um, useful route because you get uh, Joshua Eaton not very far away, and there's currently there's a relatively tricky path from that part of town. 
I mean, South Street is a challenge. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sort of with Nick that it's, you know, there isn't room for a sidewalk. But if we had the Sturgis to whatever that the street is, the Fort Summer Ave, that would be a useful addition to the network. Is that section of Walnut Street is safe boy? I think it is. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's small. Small. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it is a scenic road, and this, this is a, a barrier, but it's also not as constricted as South Street. <laughs> And just to comment, that was a problem, I think, the scenic road, not the scenic road being a problem, the situation <laughs> yeah. is that the scenic road was the reason that they couldn't connect that. And again, it kind of defeats the whole purpose, the park, the skating rink, kids can't get there, uh, Pine, Pine Ridge Road, I guess it is, has no sidewalk on it. You've got the park, which is inviting people in, and the last stretch of it, they can walk to within a quarter of a mile, and then they'd have to walk in the street. It's kind of like... Something needs to be connected differently. And again, it might be a sideline trail. I don't know if sidewalks always have to follow streets. Or put in a path. Some sort well, of some sort of an official path bike path or something like right, that. Right, like at the end of Laura Lane to get over to the high school by the I mean, college. I don't pretend to know the answer. But it was, I was surprised that it wasn't on the list at all. Right. But I know it was taken off the list because they said it was not really a doable situation but again it, it's like when they put in Parkview after they built the high school right. well the kids are going to be driving cars <laughs> and we'll think about cars first and then we won't think about <clears throat> walking at all and where do all the kids walk they <clears throat> walk in the road because there is no sidewalk we really haven't been very um, good at planning down the road uh, when it really talks about health and safety and all the issues that really are so important uh, the uh, cross section at um, Newtown Crossing and uh, whatever it is, and down at uh, by by Staples. That is, you're walking from the Reading side. You have to walk all three corners of the block to get around it. Mm. And the reason reason why? Turn on right coming out of Staples. Let's the cars go first. It's it, um, there's a there's a history here that we want to forget. Well, you go a new path. Also, the issue of the uh, MBTA bus stop on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That was <laughs> okay. pretty good discussion. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you. And Thank you. thanks to Julie and, and the town here for uh, for some really good work. I think this chart works well once you once yeah. it's explained to you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know. Cal the calculation. We've been looking at it like every day for the last <laughs> couple weeks and so it's you know yeah. Okay, so the next step is what to plug this into the template? Yeah, so I mean based on what we heard tonight, however I mean I had on my list some projects to add back in and maybe see how they come out in the matrix. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we did receive some feedback uh, via email. Um, Are you going to revisit some of the ones you wanted to combine to see what that meant? Yeah, I think I might do that. Um, and then, you know, change the Washington Street one so it's clear for it to be the other side. Mm -hmm. um, And there's probably some sweet spot for the funding amount, right? For the cost, if you combine a few of them rather than make it so expensive that it's going to eat up any money we get, maybe there's a way to combine them where they make sense logistically, um, but also that the cost stays within something reasonable. So maybe leaving, maybe combining, uh, we were talking about Vine and High there, combining something there might make sense, but mm. if it gets too expensive mm. where it's just not going to happen, then leaving the handicap. Process right. we talked about alone. Right. Probably gets it done. Mm -hmm. What is the timeline in scheduling for this project? So we're supposed to submit the prioritization plan to the state by April 1st. Um, and then I think they get back within 30 days about whether you've been whether it's been approved and then funds are released like next fiscal year maybe. That sound right? I think so, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Did they announce the funding before it's released, well before, so that we could start planning? 
ideally. <laughs> they they <laughs> announced, didn't they just announce a patch? They did. They did. I don't know what that was for. Yeah. Once they release it, I think that's it. We get the money in it. So. Yeah, um, but there was not that long ago they announced the patch. So I don't know if they it took them like that long. Does that sound yeah, yeah, yeah. sound yeah. I manage a program for the state and it takes okay. it's, it's random. So it might be a while, okay. I guess, is what we're saying. Yes. But, um, and it won't go that far as we mentioned. So yeah. I don't know. But I I, I appreciate all the feedback and we'll incorporate those ideas. Um, it definitely can't hurt to have additional projects in here. Um, like you mentioned, you know, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Um, that has a lot of merit. Um, and revise this. And That's good. Yeah. And okay. We'll talk about it as a staff group as well. We have a, we have a meeting later this month, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll get back to the state. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you get to guys need a break. We'll go right to this next one. So next up is signed permit application for one Pleasant Street, AKA six forty three Main Street. All right, thanks for waiting. <coughs> you know the thing is, we have public hearings and no one shows up. When people show up, I just feel like we really need to hear what they have to say. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of meetings where we don't have a lot of audience. <laughs> So is this an entirely new sign, or is there a sign there already? Well, it's this is a new sign. We've had a sign for 40 years there. Well, we moved to the front of, well, I guess, 643 Main Street about 14 years ago. We were over where Tim Kelly is now. I don't know if anybody knows Tim Kelly, over there in the barbershop. We were there for a long, long time, and that's where our sign was. Actually, it doesn't show the sign. The uh, I think the, I think this is the bracket. The bracket is here somewhere. It doesn't show in that picture. That's where our sign was before that. Our sign was here, so okay. it's being moved. But there is a sign. Barbara has a sign there. It's a good looking sign, good style for that area. Now, I don't know, we've got the building sign on the, on the front, the portico, right? Yep. So I don't think there's any, any conflict in terms of the number and so on and so forth. Since we've got a multi tenant building. Is there a sign on the front? Yeah, no. it's on the it's on the uh, Latham sign yeah. signs. Yeah. And uh, what's your the, of the I board. have lettering on the windows over Latham and Latham sign. Which that can easily come off if there's a conflict. You I don't, don't think so. That. I think it's oh, business B, right? On the windows. Yeah, that's fine. Business B, you're allowed both of either and sorry, you're allowed a blade sign as well as a wall sign. Is this like a brick red? I mean, I, I don't know yeah, if this is the, I mean, it's probably not that's the color. That's a lousy brick red. Yeah. Um, <laughs> email. yeah, we were kind of trying to match, well, my idea was to match the red in colors, you know. I don't live in red, red, red but yeah. I grew up in red. There's a, 
uh, high school achievement sign in front of Walgreens. Oh, yeah. We're kind of trying to yeah, play off of that a little bit. You said it projects about four feet from the building. The bracket, I think, is 46 inches long. The sign is 30 inches wide. So there's. Yeah, there's a little. On the corner of the building, the brick. Uh, you, doesn't really show up. The, there's a little brick ornamentation, so we need to clear. Yeah, right here. Yeah, this is. See that? So, you know, for, for the, when there's some wind, it's going to clear that. So I'll, I'll, <coughs> I think it would be out about six inches with about six inches of overhang. So you said the bracket's 46 inches? That's my best guess. Okay. So It'll be the same as the bracket that's that's over the barber shop. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Tony DeRozzo, 130 John Street. What floor is this business located on? Second. <coughs> business B. Business B, second floor requires a uh, master signage plan for the building. But the sign is not above. The sign is, the sign is not above, is not above, above the, the sills floor. of the second floor. It's not the sign, it's the business. Uh. Which, which, which regulations are we using right now, by the way? Mm -hmm. The ones approved in November or the prior? Technically, they allow the same things. They're very close. <laughs> How do we fix that? The fix was that you do allow uh, second floor businesses to have a blade sign so long as the building has a master signage plan. Uh, I thought we had the right to waive the master signage plan. Didn't we add that? I thought we had a discussion about that. Well, you had a sign there before, right? Not in this same. But yeah. Not on this building. Right. On this building. Well, the, those are the same building. So this is 643 Main, like other than our office. This is one pleasant, the doors right here. Buildings are attached, it's the same building, the same deed. So I obviously the, the frame building is newer than oh, the- You were mentioning the barbershop. I thought the barbershop was in the next building. It's, it's actually the same, it's, the it's same all building. one building. There's, there's a Main Street door and a Pleasant Street door. <coughs> That's an addition. That's attached. And they're open to each other on the second floor. So we used to occupy both of those spaces. According to the table, business B projecting blade sign is one per business. I mean, it doesn't specify necessarily the first floor or second floor. building were you on the second floor yeah yeah I think we've been there since 75 more
not finding the requirement for this. Yeah, Tony, I, I, looking at the November uh, ZBL, I mean, I don't see any requirement for the uh, master signage plan. I know that we, re we require the master signage plan for uh, signs above the uh, first floor, but that's basically on the facade, typically. Mm -hmm. Where the with the uh, projecting sign, the, uh, there's no constraint. I don't believe. <coughs> we actually tried to do a master sign maybe ten years ago. We couldn't. <laughs> we wanted to put it with a in, with a garden is. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why. I didn't go there. It may have been one of the earlier revisions. I, I'm not quite certain. I have a copy of the, uh, the signage bylaws that passed the town meeting. What do you have there? You have the pre-last version. Do you have the the one prior to the one that just got approved? I think so. I'm looking at the old, the one from November 2015. Yeah, yeah. that's what David has as well. Yeah, so and I don't see that. In I don't there. see that language in there. Um, from yeah. the, 80, the 25th, November 2015 was 8.2.641 had a business occupying um, for a lot which contains more than one business. And in A, a business occupying the ground floor is allowed two signs. But the table one says... One of the things we tried to fix was because the question is, what about a business that doesn't occupy a ground floor? You said two signs? This will be one sign. I feel like we're really splitting hairs on this. I don't have an issue with a sign. Yeah, right. and he had it before with a very similar condition. Yeah. I think that the uh, the issue that came up on Haven Street with the bank building is that they wanted the big, giant sign yep. on the second floor, above the second floor windows. Right. And that raised the flag. This is not that condition. No. And I don't see the master signage plan requirement no. in the code that I have right here. Or, or in the previous one, as a matter of fact. I mean, and, and if it until I get a until I get the copy back from the AG saying that that new one is enforced, even if it's in there, I wouldn't enforce it. Right, because I, I think that's a maybe a semantics oversight about the business versus where this, the business location versus the sign, sign location. Sign location. Yeah. Agreed. So. Yeah, because uh, actually <laughs> one Haven, right? They do have a master signage plan, but. All of the signs, even for the second floor, are in that location, right? They come around the band of the building right. between the first and second floor windows, which makes sense. Right. So I'm, I'm okay with this sign. I did note on the copy that I have that I'll stamp that you're, you're looking to match the redding red color, just so that if it shows up red, no one thinks that you told us one thing. Yeah, that's not really the that's I noted that on the one that I'll stamp. Oh, good, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, Will you actually stamp two? That way I sure. can just give a copy to the town clerk. Move that oh. the CBDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for the signage at 1 Pleasant Street, also known as 643 Main Street. Is there a second? second? All in favor? So just to be clear, so 643 is the front. Right. So I'm just. It says it's also be, known as. Okay. Yeah, I wrote like yeah. both. Yeah, business goes to 643, you know, for the orders of the building. But your so address is 1 Pleasant Street. Right. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, the building is 643, right? Okay. You're good. I'll send okay. you an official copy tomorrow. Or make that one stay. Thank you very much. <laughs> No, I'll be working. It just, just won't be like scanning and, you know. I don't have all the accoutrement at my house.
our fountains into water features. You guys should be drinking gray water. Yes, right. Sell that to the rest of the people in the building. <laughs> You're actually looking to step in the snow. He just goes snowshoeing, runs snow, does snowshoe races. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't be coordinated enough for that. <laughs> well, I already have like challenges with just like running the streets. I actually have a running path from my house on South Street all the way to downtown, but it's all little back. Nice. Turns. I never go to Main Street. I run down South Street all the time, actually. I run to South south to West, then I run down Summer back to Maine. Okay, I don't go that back. side of Summer. I only run South from my corner at Walnut to Curtis and then right off. Hmm, okay. We can interest. <laughs> Would you like a sidewalk? No. <laughs> Although, a sidewalk at the turn, Yeah. right, would help. The, there used to be a lot of kids, including mine, that mm -hmm. would take the bus stop in front of the park. Yep. And just making that little crossing right there at the uh, Walnut and South. Right. That's the one that's, that's on the list, time. I think. Right? That, that was mm -hmm. at least that was the one I looked at when I was. That's what I thought was meant by that one on the list. Yeah. So I, I think it's not on my neighbor's property. He's the last house on that corner, but it's a steep incline, which is probably ledge. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just getting a little section there to get people to be able to cross. Over instead of being in the middle of that road because it's, it's just too blind, too blind turns. Show me that real quick. Trees that will slow people down, but those are gone. Um, so sorry, let's look at that real quick. Sure. Just curious. South and Walnut, it's the first one. Oh, okay. I was looking at the turn right here by Pine Ridge. That's a pretty bad turn to make in a car. Right. So this one is the one where... Yeah. That one's really tough when you're walking because... Which a, way? Either way. Okay. Like on Walnut? Yeah. Okay. No, no. We're on South. It's that little section of South. Yeah, it's going to be a little... Am I going the wrong way? Yeah, go Yes. <laughs> No, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the one. So there's a couple of things that happen here. You're coming, as you're coming from, from Woburn, let's say, and you take this right turn here where that car is, take that right turn, you're completely blind, and it's narrow, and it's uphill. Wait, sorry, so you're driving? South is to the left. Yeah. That's you're, South Street. So you're on South Street? If you're coming, coming from Walnut, well, actually, sorry, it's still south right there, Yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. So if you're coming from there towards us, okay. and you make that right turn. Like this car, Yes. except yeah. turning here. Turn yeah. right. Yeah. You're turning blind. Yep. You're turning uphill. Okay. And in the winter, it's worse because when they plow it, you can see the leaf pattern here, this this leaf pattern on the ground. That's how they plow. The snow bank comes out in a square, not around the turn. Right. So it's even narrower right. in the winter. Okay. And if you're coming from south, you're coming, again, up the hill, and you're blind both left and right as you approach this intersection. Coming from south this no, way? No, no, from or this direction. way? Yeah, from that way. From south, south. Yeah, I always run down here and I hug the turn. And all the cars try not to hit me. Right. <laughs> That's a pretty bad turn. Sometimes and they go kind of fast. I haven't paid attention to whether it's still on a bus route because my kids don't take, I don't know if kids taking buses, but when they were, <coughs> that was always a worry as they got just, just 100 feet that it is from my house to this piece here in front of the park. Okay. All right. Good to know. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, review of stormwater bylaw, bylaw guidelines and site plan review guidelines. So I threw together some stormwater bylaw guidelines, stormwater permits, 
um, procedures for you today. Um, I realized I was when I was reading through the bylaw again that it's kind of already outlined in the bylaw yeah. what's required. I don't know if you want to go beyond that and add to the process. Um, but I kind of made it in the same format as the site plan. Um, My general thoughts were, I, I thought we simplified the um, stormwater bylaw, right? What do you mean? Well, <clears throat> we brought it in compliance with the... Um, with the current rules, the current state rules. The Actually, state with rules, the yeah. four, the... Yeah, with the MS4 permit that has been out for a while. There's another one coming in right, July. Right, right, but we did the current one. Right, right. Yeah. And so I felt that I did, didn't want to complicate it with too many review, too many rules for uh, the management part of it. Right, so this is like, a lot of this is just right out of the bylaw. Right. Yeah. Basically all is right out of the bylaw. Yeah, this is this is a good uh, checklist, if you will. As long as it covers what it's supposed to, I, I thought that would be a good approach. Thank you. So, I guess my question on this is: um, uh, Oftentimes, this will be this will be developed and submitted in conjunction with a uh, site plan, a subdivision plan, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we want to review it like it is part of a site plan or right. subdivision. All in one. All in one right. package, all at one time. Mm -hmm. I, I guess the thing it, um, here is we do have to have sort of separate um, components, but um, it sort of feels to me like because we're calling out for specific plans with, and I assume that these match the um, numbers and sizes of our site plan yeah. review. Um, um, well, the, the they don't the, the rec these don't because um, well the way that I see this is that you guys would all have all the information the same as the site plan, but not all the staff are gonna review this. So that like it would really just be me, the conservation administrator, the town engineer, and the DPW director. I mean, so that's why there's a lesser requirement for yeah. plans. I mean, I'm trying to get as much as I can towards a paperless society. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, and then electronic can go to all the rest of the staff. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, guess, I, I guess what I'm thinking is some way, I mean, it says here, should the applica uh, application blah, 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 um, be submitted in conjunction uh, community development director shall combine the hearings and streamline the process as possible. Um, I, I think um, if I can suggest that you put even stronger words in there, not that you'll just streamline the process, but we want them to integrate the um, the stormwater plans <clears throat> right. into the site plan review process. They need separate plans, but right. Right. we don't want to see them separate. Right, no. Right. And here it just sounds like you're going to do the two things simultaneously. That's in my mind. I wasn't like... No, no, no I know. I right. just, yeah, right. I think right. that right. Uh, that's what, I mean, I, so the, right, I mean, that's what well, we talked about is so that we, it's not adding, <laughs> adding on anything to us. It's another plan that we right. need to make As sure. As part of that your have. set that matches yeah. all the other, yes. right. Yeah, and that's what I was envisioning. Like, I mean, most, 
most of the time, especially, I mean, really every time there's a project that's greater than an acre disturbance, I'm involved really early on. Um, so I always get the opportunity to tell them exactly what I need up front. So that's, obviously I won't always be around. Right. Um, and, you know, so. Obviously. Well, is, is this... <laughs> I could die tomorrow. Is the final sentence here, I mean, it should it be something on the order of uh, <coughs> the plan information should be integrated with and combined with basically give them a heads up that if you if it's submitted in conjunction with the subdivision plan the plan set for the submission should include all of the necessary things so then i would say when when submitted in conjunction with the subdivision plan stormwater let's see application for stormwater permit shall be integrated into the submitted right. the, the submittal or something or submitted plan yeah I, mean, I think yeah. like I can work it out with yeah. applicants because I don't necessarily want them to. If they view it as entirely integrated into the plan set, then I'm going to get more than I want. I think. You know, they just go to print and they just. But if they're thinking of it as six of these, mm. four of these, and then I just put them together and give them to the right people that need them. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm really envisioning it well, as like know that, three additional plan sheets. You don't really mean that the prints are bound all together, I think he means the engineering and the, the information is included in the submittal. Whether they give you three sheets from the one package and ten sheets from the other, that's fine. Yeah. Right, but I think, I'm, well, I guess you can't you know assume you anything. Did, did yeah, you mean yeah, that? yeah. I mean, uh, um, I'll, I mean, I, I honestly could care less about the, the, you know, how the paper all fits together. Um, I, I think that to the degree that we can we can feel like we're reviewing one package that is all thought about together and that when we have a site plan review that we that everyone they don't we don't think that we don't project it like we're having two different discussions right. on two different permits and there's a decision to be made on the stormwater I mean right. there is no, two different decisions right. in reality but we want to make the two decisions all right. all integrated <coughs> and, and have we one want package to have <coughs> think about it all at once. Right. And that's really what I'm saying here. It sort of feels like you know, well also it could for be two the, different things. For the record, for the historical piece of it, we want it all to be in one place. Right. Because if we have them make revisions to one, they have to go to make revisions to the other and we want that. I mean, I'm just hoping that there's not an applicant out there that thinks that they're going to design stormwater for a project that's using different meets and bounds and monuments and survey than for the actual project that they've given us a site plan for. I right. mean, that's I exact. It's exactly <laughs> my point: is that they may turn to one consultant and say, "Here, you guys go do this," yeah, right. and then their architect go do this or I, you know I mean you're gonna pay it, the one solo guy to do the plan and the survey well, and you would think so yeah right I mean there's and one business that might do it that way <laughs> I just that's I all, that's it. really what I I'll that's exactly the, what we want to avoid yeah yeah so hopefully we're smarter than that at this in this day and age um, we are but with all this technology <laughs> We don't know communication that we have. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you make a very good yeah. point. So. Anything else? Any other comments? Comments from the public? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're just going to revise this? Do we have to vote on yeah, this? Yeah, we'll have to actually have a hearing. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, and you guys will have to adopt it. But I just wanted to at least give it to you to start to digest. Yeah. Um, I could potentially schedule the hearing for the next your next meeting. Um, the 27th? I might wait to hear it from the Attorney General first, actually. Yeah, why don't we? Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> 
but we don't have the post office next at the next meeting anymore. So. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. So, site plan review. So this, um, I separated out the minor from the full, um, just mostly to make it easier for applicants, actually, so that they just get the one sheet for the minor and they don't think they have to give us all this other stuff. Usually with minor site plans, I talk to the person and kind of, depending on the scope of the project, tell them what I think is necessary. It's not really a one-size-fits-all mm -hmm. thing. So. Yep. All right, that's fine. Same thing here. This is uh, this requires a hearing as well. Sorry, say it again. Does this require a hearing? Which the one? Site plan review guidelines. Um. Yes. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I mean, what you've got here looks ready for the hearing. So. thought it looked good. Yeah. And actually one thing I wanted to ask is um, we had this conversation a little over a year ago when I first started here, but is there any interest in not having copies at the meeting? Copies. Yeah, get us all iPads or something like that. I told you a lot of the agents, not agencies, but um, larger uh, utility authorities that I work with give their board iPads, and that's what that's all they get. So everything is delivered to that somehow. One was iPads, one might have been tablets, uh, or um, even those laptops that have the dual purpose for almost okay, right on that. I mean, I didn't know I mean, if having my, it on the I'll screen, if, like looking at it in advance and then having it appear is good enough, or if you still want to have half size prints. Because I can use, I can edit anything in PDF, <coughs> you know, I can even get uh, edit AutoCAD drawings. I don't have a problem reviewing stuff on screens. I've got relatively large monitors at work, so at lunch if I'm looking at a drawing, I can look at that. Uh, so I don't have a problem not getting any paper at all. I know that's not for everybody, mm -hmm. and I don't know what the future boards would look like. Right. I have no problem looking at all electronic stuff. Everyone else is conspicuously so silent. Five copies. <laughs> well, um, it's a waste of paper. Most of it. I can tell you that um, uh, I like having the site plan, the actual plan, paper copy. But um, the um, the one that's that's a waste of paper is the um, all the calcs for um, the, the drainage, drainage, drainage cap. Yeah, the I, you know, traffic. I will actually I will look through it, but it's this thick, and you know, I, I, I might find like one page that I actually look in detail at. I don't um, usually give those to you guys. Um, but uh, no, would you, yeah. one thing you could do is require them to submit non-GBC, non-plastic uh, uh, dividers and everything so that the yeah. whole thing can be recycled. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people we submit proposals <coughs> can require that as well. Or, or um, three ring bound. Yeah. If they need to bind it, you can do that. Then it's three ring bound. I can put it in a card. I actually tell them not to bind it. I tell them just to clip it and then I save the clips and I recycle them. You're saving it's usually what I do. I hate binder. Like the three. Well, just have it submitted on supplies you need. Submit on, you know, <laughs> yeah. three by five whiteboards. <laughs> yeah, so actually that's where I get a lot of these guys. 
But no, yeah, if you need it submitted, submit if they need to bind it, which right. sometimes they will, it should be in three ring binders. Yeah, that's and then a good you idea. can reuse them. Maybe any so document that's over yeah, like, I don't like pages. But I'm sure how. a lot of people around here use three ring binders. That's are changing. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's those are really good ideas. Um, so as soon as we hear from the attorney general, I will schedule both of these things for hearings for you guys. Um, okay. And if you think of any changes in the meantime, just let me know. Um, Next. So the visioning working group um, was supposed to meet tomorrow, but that's gotten pushed back another week because of the snowstorm. So we don't really have any updates on progress on that yet, but hopefully next time. Yeah, I keep thinking about that whole plan because once you put it up on that screen, you can sort of see the whole area just in plan, right. and I've probably stared at that plan forever. Uh, changed the way I've been thinking about that whole section, and of course the train drives by it you know, every day, oh, right. so yeah. I just stare at it, trying to think about all the possibilities, especially with some sort of multimodal hub yeah. there, and a large enough parking garage mm -hmm. to attract not only whatever is occupying the area, but you know outside elements. Really a lot of potential there. Yeah, it's it's seductive. I mean, be, the, the question is, how can we get there from here, <laughs> and how and how quickly? <laughs> yes. One deficiency I saw. I'm um, excuse. Tony Durazo, 130 John Street. One deficiency I saw on that map was the lack of elevations. Uh, when you're looking at it, yeah. you see Ash Street almost looks like a connection, but it's a 50 foot high f right. uh, hill. So there's no way of getting up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all that. I mean, but even just the flat traffic intersections that we know are problematic and require more than just a few little adjustments. Yeah, yeah. You could do, a, like, a, you know, as we go along, because that would be informative to see, especially in that area where you have, like, the retaining wall with um, Jordans. And um, we could do, like, a cleaner map that just has some topography and some other features on it. Yeah, I mean, the GIS has topography yeah, on it. We could it. always bring that up. Yeah. Anything else before we hit the minutes? Um, well, we can do minutes, and then I just have a couple of things I wanted to tell you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. So got February uh, 13th first. Yes, February 13th. <coughs> I didn't catch anything. I didn't need that. The first degree. CPDC approved the minutes for the meeting of February 13th, 2017, as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? February 27th.
transfer these into clerk's form. This is her format. This is her format? Okay. Right, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. So there's no header or footer on any of the subsequent pages that indicate what date the minutes belong to. Yeah, I know. And you'd asked one time that we say page one of three, two of three, three of three. And when I asked about making those changes, um, it didn't seem achievable at the time. I guess some committees put their own headers on with the page numbers, like Paula does that for the selectmen. Okay. And she lets it, I mean, Paula has to do it for each set, but. Oh, that's good to know. Let's go in. Cool. Proof like that. I'll see about okay. doing that. All right. I know when this new format came out, it was uneditable. Oh, yeah, you can edit it a little bit now. Okay. Move that the CPTC approve the minutes for the meeting of February 27th, 2017, as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Good. Um, so, I sent an email earlier today about maybe trying to schedule a second meeting in April. Because we have a <coughs> decent, I think maybe six weeks between actually probably five weeks between our April 3rd meeting and our May 8th meeting um, when we might have a flurry of activity. So um, I know it gets tricky with the holidays and school vacation and town meeting. So town meeting is what? The it starts on April 24th. On the 24th, okay. I was wondering if there might be a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Um, maybe either the week of, well, I hate to suggest the school vacation week, um, either that week or the week the town meeting opens. That might work for everybody. When is our election day? The 4th. Okay. So we had uh, April 10th, we were going to have a meeting, but that's Passover, so I had to reschedule it. So that April 10th is out as well. April 17th is Patriot's Day. Is that a real thing here? Do you guys get that off? We do. Easter Monday in Canada. It is Easter Monday. That's right. Be part of Passover. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now I have openings anytime, but you know, something could come up, so I would, I'd say I'm available. Whatever okay. you need. Are you guys mostly around the April vacation week? Yeah, for now. For now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it starts, I don't know. I don't I have kids in the school, but I'm guessing it starts like the 17th. Yeah, the 17th. I remember being a kid. Easter Monday, the first day. They might not get it, though. Don't they just tack them up at the end? All right, so maybe I'll yeah. propose. Do you prefer Tuesdays or Wednesdays? You're talking about evening? I prefer not Tuesday. But okay. It is a movable. Word. I have no preference. No. So maybe I might try for the 19th? Wednesday the 19th. Okay. At least that, because the next week will be town meeting. So. Right. All right. Does that work? Wednesday the 19th? All right. Sure. Great. Thank you very much. Is that a prediction that we'll have um, uh, things coming in? Yes. Like an educated prediction? Yes. <laughs> Believe me, it'll be canceled 
as soon as possible <laughs> when the prediction changes, when the winds of change blow on in. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so I'm going to start putting together a presentation for town meeting to discuss at our next meeting on the 27th. I just wanted to get you guys thinking about who might take the lead on actually presenting it. And we have three different types of articles. So we have um, recreational marijuana, downtown smart growth district, and accessory apartments. So it doesn't matter to me who does it, but. Yeah, I mean, I'll do any, any or all of them, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, okay. And you have some input. Yeah. I will have some input on yeah. the. Okay, so I'll put together a draft and then we'll figure out. You guys did a really good yeah. job last November. Yeah, so. and I think we should have more people doing it just one because I think it um, it just uh, it, I think it's better for town meeting to see multiple members talking about right. the articles yeah. or making the reports mm -hmm. um, and then last but certainly not least Jean has been working with some of the abutters of Reading Woods who live on Curtis Street um, and with Pulte um, because the landscaping that was put along the back there. I, I don't know if you remember, but it was supposed to be a certain amount of evergreens and deciduous, and they put it up, and it died, and they put it up again, and it died. And then they came back to you for a minor modification, and they were allowed to just put in some low-lying shrubs, so. No, they put the low-lying shrubs in without coming to us. I have the minor modification and the minutes. I thought that they put those in and then had to come back to explain why. Yeah. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. It never Something made like sense that. to me that you would have just allowed that <laughs> oh, because yeah. it doesn't provide any screening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That is what I worked on that buffer. <laughs> yeah, so there was zero buffer, right. and now with like the trees bare and the headlights, they come right down yeah. the raceway. They shine at the neighbors. Um, so Jean has worked out a solution for a six-foot tall fence. It's about 200 feet long. Um, that we had some funds from when Fulte did their project left over in town that we're returning to them to help cover the cost. It's just, it's funds that we just had, that we were gonna return to them anyway. Um, so that helps meet in the middle <coughs> with the neighbors. Six foot tall, does it? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a berm that it's up on, mm -hmm. so. They originally <laughs> were gonna put a four foot tall fence, um, and then Fulte came back with a six foot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the original ask was for a four. We'll be done with it. <laughs> well, we had asked them for site sections through every property to show us that that mm. topography, right? To mm -hmm. so you could point to it and say this this tree doesn't cover that or this fence doesn't cover that. But mm -hmm. they never. So as long as they put the fence like on the top of the berm, it should be fine. Well, yeah. but we also want the um, we we don't want an Auschwitz kind of fence. We want something with, which is you know some variation in decorative. You know, like the lattice top and, and some features. Right. So the last image that I saw was kind of, it, I don't know if it's wood, but it looked wood. Maybe it's, it's like pressure like, treated. Like uh, Calariso's uh, vinyl, yeah. the vinyl yeah. one that looks like wood. Yeah, I think so, it was something yeah. like that. And um, it seemed accept acceptable to the neighbors, and it's something that we'll take I don't think afford. they want the lattice. I think you want as much so. solid to block out any light. I mean, really where well, it should be, it should be at the edge of the parking lot, right? Because then you'd maximize right. the blockage. But then it sort of, they didn't want to put it there because they felt that it was not taking advantage of the landscaping. Right, the, uh, right. On their side. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the condominium association wants the landscaping. And they want to enjoy a little bit of the yard that's there. And so this is the agreement that they've come to. Just want to let you guys know. Um, That's all for me. Any DRT comments for the post office? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nope. On the website or? No, but okay. I'll share them. Okay. Hmm. And uh, the Sitco sign? I haven't heard a peep, but I'll follow up. What's the Sitco sign? It's a glowing white great. box. I'm still trying to think about how I want to use that email trail to point out that. We are not difficult to work with. So the Sitco on uh, South, South Street, South, South of Maine, yeah. right? Right, yeah. Not Came in here, time. right? Back, make sure your background is opaque. Yes, yes, it's going to be opaque. If you see the email trail from Julie saying, could you please submit the sample so we can confirm that it's opaque? 
why don't you trust us? <laughs> that kind oh, of, really? That kind <laughs> of language. And, it's a good know, time. And she was being very nice. It's not a matter of trust. It's a matter of record. We want to have it on the record. In the past, they submitted something that was apparently opaque, and the sign they put up is not opaque. Nope, it's going in my box. So this is why we don't distrust people, even when we do the process the way that we think is going to pan out. It doesn't, so. Yeah, no, I, was, I was curious because the, the at one point it was the, the canopy was red all around, and then they went back up and, and pulled the red off. Oh, they of took the, it off, huh? Off I was of wondering the what they did. Side that was facing the highway. The the south side of the canopy is white. They had banded it in red. I wonder if they just put it on. Maybe, maybe they didn't do a good job. Well, then it was peeling off. That's, I mean, it's still white. It's white now. They're allowed to have two colors per their variants, so we went through that as well. That's a whole other email chain. Yeah, no, that's fine. I don't. Yeah. Have, we don't have a problem with that. I think. I think we, you know, it sort of dresses it up a little bit. And that's fine. But the opaque thing, I can't believe we still can't get that right. And I don't see why they would say we're being difficult when we pointed out to them, look, this is what we want, and they said yes. And, Are you sure you're going to do this? Yes, we're going to do it. And they don't do it. And now we're the bad guy trying to make them put in what they said they were going to put in. Well, what I realized I should have been doing all along is actually just putting a condition that says, if your internally illuminated sign is you know, not meeting our bylaw and is glowing through the background, we are going to require you to fix it. Just put that right How in there. They, were they issued a final permit? Uh, they were, yeah. Well, see, I don't understand that. What is what is what the final? What do you final, mean by a final permit? I'm sorry. Uh, doesn't doesn't someone have to sign off on the final inspection on everything that was oh, done? I don't know that signs are inspected. Uh, They're electric. There's the issue. <laughs> They're electric signs, so the wiring should have certainly been looked at. But that right that would be before the panel goes in, though, right? I don't know. You guys are our inspectors. <laughs> I'll just start throwing yeah, rocks at it. <laughs> I'll make it opaque. I just think it's silly that, you know. It's not like we're getting an as built. We pointed you know? it out yeah. to them. Like, they agreed yeah. to do it. Yeah, Their silly. applicants, representatives <coughs> stood here before us and said absolutely. And then. Yeah, it's okay. We'll yeah. get them to fix it. I just think I'll follow up again. It'll be good. Well, let me know if they start griping and saying that we're being difficult because I don't think that we were in this case. I think we were very clear from the beginning. This is what it has to be. They agreed. And then they didn't do it. I'm not worried about being called difficult. <laughs> I don't have a problem being the bad cop at all. I'm just yeah. saying that in general, people keep saying that we're being difficult, and I don't think we are. Okay, anything else? Nope, that's all for me. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, I seconded it. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor? Thank you.